girls and girls, my name's Dan. Welcome back to The Forge. This is part two in the mini hammer making series. In the previous episode, I showed you how to make a hammer a bit like this one, this one here. Um, I talked about punching the hole and material selection. In this episode, we're gonna take that material, the C45 that we used, and we're gonna heat treat it. Stay tuned to the end of the video and I'll tell you how you can win another one of these hammers. I've already told you how you can win one of them in a giveaway in the first episode, so if you'd like to find out about that one, go and check that out. And in this episode, I'll be telling how you can win one of the others. Rough and dirty way of doing this um, for normalizing your material. Just make sure the whole thing's non-magnetic. Not too hot, um, a sort of a, a dull orange for the C45 is pretty good. Um, we only have a heat treating temperature of about, uh, oh no, it's quite high, it's 940 degrees Celsius, I think. Um, but um, for the normalizing uh, cycle, just in air, just like this, I'm putting it on a block and uh, just making sure that it's all non-magnetic. I'll leave that to cool down. And um, then once it's cooled down, um, so you can touch it with your hand, then we'll do the heat treat. Okay, whilst that's normalizing, I've got two hammers here that need heat treating. They've already been uh, normalized in, in a similar fashion to the hammer that we're making for this video. Uh, but I'm gonna go over two slightly different ways to do the heat treats. Um, we're gonna do this one with gas, and we're gonna do this one in the forge. Uh, very simple processes. Um, if you don't have gas, this is irrelevant, uh, but what we're gonna do is we're gonna heat each end using the uh, oxypropane, and we're gonna get both ends up to temperature at the same time, and then we're gonna quench the whole hammer in water, uh, and then we'll temper that back. And then we're also gonna do this one, but we're gonna get the whole thing up to an even temperature in the, in the fire. And then once it's up to a nice, even, orangey color, we're gonna start turning the faces in the fire until we get both of the faces up to temperature. And then we're gonna quench the whole hammer and then we're gonna temper that back as well. We're gonna temper all the hammers the same. Um, so yeah, let's get on with that. C45's water quenching. I'm gonna keep this in the water until it's um, touchable by hand. And um, you wanna keep it moving. This prevents air bubbles building up around the, the material um, and preventing the heat treat from working. So I don't want this to temper off if I can help it. I want to control the temper. So I want to be able to touch this. Yeah, it looks good. Looks good. So what we're trying to achieve when it comes to hardness uh, and the heat treating process, and what is it that we're looking for when it comes to making hammers? I think this is neglected sometimes by the ham hammer making community, and as a consequence, um, it's not very, it's not talked about very much. But when it does come to knife making, it's a big point and they get a bit anal about it. So what we've got to do is find somewhere in the middle where we can have a conversation and sort of describe what we're looking for, why we're doing it, and how to work out whether or not we've done a good job or not. Now a hammer doesn't need to be that hard. Uh, there are people out there that will tell you that they need to be brutal hard 
um, like as hard as knives. That's ridiculous. There are steels out there that will do that job. 4140 is a good example. 4140 will hold an edge and you can slam it into things. That's why people make axes out of them. But it doesn't, but a hammer doesn't need to be that hard. What a hammer needs to do is not wear away, have good longevity, and also be able to be used day in, day out without falling to pieces or splitting in half. So what we're looking to do with a hammer is make it tough, uh, strong, resistance to wear and also make it so that we can use it day in day out so what we need to know is how hard our material can get before we even heat treat it and c45 can only get up to 55 rockwell anyway so it's not going to hold an edge very well um, it's not going to be the hardest thing on the planet but it's going to be harder than the hot metal that we're hitting and it's also going to be harder than most of the mild steels that we use day to day so we can dent things with it and it should be a pretty good hammer but it's not going to start destroying our anvils and other bits of equipment that we use in the workshop how do we check it well it's very simple what we can do is we can take something like a file and we can run it over the surface of the heat treated metal don't do this when you've tempered it do it before you've tempered it because that's going to give you a dodgy result now this file is pretty new and it bites in a little bit but it still skates as well so I know that this is biting but it's not biting that much now these files tend to be about uh, 64 Rockwell and um, 64 Rockwell is way too hard for a hammer uh, it's not too hard for a file it's about right so what I like to use is a slightly worn file uh, this one here is a bit old now I've been using it for a while and you can hear it's skating on there quite nicely now. Um, I don't know necessarily what the rockwell of this file is or how hard this file is. I'm sure the hardness hasn't changed. It's just that some bits are blunt. But if I skate this over the, if I skate this over the raw iron vice, for example, you can see that it cuts quite deep. So I know that the file still cuts. It just it won't cut something that's harder than it or. A bit harder or bit or close to its hardness so that's what we're trying to do we found out now that we're probably around 50 to 55 Rockwell which is what this will get up to we've done the job that we intended to do and it should make a reasonably good hammer so these are some old hammer drifts and I've uh, roughly polished the faces up so I can see the temper colors come through stick the hammers on oh, nearly burnt myself and just let them soak up the heat from the drift and then after a period of time we'll start seeing the colour come through on the faces. I've got two drifts in the fire so we'll just keep rotating these out until we've got the colour that we want. Right, I'll um, let you see this a little bit faster. Okay, so we've got these up to a straw-ish yellowy colour. I've got to be quick now. And what we're going to do is we're going to do something called freezing the temper. Grab that off there. The, uh, grab the um, hammer, Elliot. So we've frozen the temper. So do that. What Elliot's going to do now is just going to take him and stick him in the water. Good lad. Okay, so what we've got ourselves is a strawish colour on each of the faces uh, about 140 degrees Celsius uh, ish um, which is the lowest end of the temper colours that we want and this will keep it hard but it will take the impact nicely so should be a relatively good hammer
you so much for joining me. I do hope you have enjoyed today's episode. This is part two in a three part series on hammer making. Um, these videos are gonna be released over the next couple of days over this week. We've already released part one, part three will be released in the next couple of days. If you're a patron, however, you already have access to the full series plus some extra stuff. So definitely go and check that out. There's a link to that in the description. Like I said at the beginning of the video, I'm giving away three hammers, one with each episode. If you'd like to get your hands on this one, this is one of the big boys. Uh, if you'd like to get your hands on this one, a Stanley pattern rounder-esque kind of thing, uh, you can, it's very simple. All you have to do is go down to the description where you'll find a link and that link will send you to my Patreon. Become a Patreon and you get entered into a raffle. I will draw the winner in 30 days of making this video. So best of luck. Thank you so much for joining me. I do hope you've enjoyed today's video. I've really enjoyed making it. If you did enjoy it, remember leave a like and subscribe. Remember to ring that bell for notifications, drop a comment down below and share this video on other platforms and with your friends. It really does help. If you'd like to support the channel in other ways, there's a few simple things you can do. Head down to the description and click on some of the links. There's one for my Instagram. Uh, you can get message me and see all stories and things happening as they're happening live. So I do that sort of thing. You could also uh, go to shop and the Etsy and purchase something. That's a great way to support me directly. I am gonna leave the video there. Thank you so much for joining me. There'll be a link down here to the previous video and that is the subscribe button to this channel. That is a Patreon buttony thing and these are the names of all my lovely Patreons. Thank you so much for your support uh, and that is everything for today. See you later, goodbye.